Hi, my name is Mark from the Swamp School. Today we're going to talk about a type of wetland called swamps. So let's get learning. Here's some of the topics we're going to cover today. First, we'll have to know the definition of a swamp. We'll talk about the two different kinds of swamps and then why swamps are so important. So, what is a swamp? To put it in a short amount of words, swamps are wetlands, dominated by trees or shrubs, or, to group them together, dominated by woody plants. Swamps are either saturated with water or have standing water during certain times of the year. The water in a swamp usually comes from surface water, like precipitation, runoff from higher land, etc., and even from groundwater. Swamps can be found on any continent except Antarctica, and can range in size from very small to quite large. Some swamps are even former lakes or ponds that have been flooded with trees or shrubs. There are two types of swamps that we're going to be talking about. These are freshwater swamps and saltwater swamps. However, sometimes swamps are named for the type of vegetation that grow in them, like cypress swamps or hardwood swamps. You may hear these terms in your studies, but in general, swamps are transition areas that are not totally land or water. First, We'll talk about freshwater swamps that form around, you guessed it, freshwater systems like lakes and streams. Some freshwater swamps in the southeastern United States have cypress trees with Spanish moss hanging from the branches. Because these trees sometimes and often exist in standing water, the tree's root system sometimes grow out of the water and look like knees that can stand as tall as 4 meters, that's about 12 feet, out of the water. This is an adaptation that allows the trees in the swamps to be stabilized in water and not fall over. Trees and swamps sometimes have fanned out trunks that you can see at the base of the tree. This is also an adaptation that allows the tree to stand upright. The widened bases of trunks as support for the trees. We'll talk about these adaptations in another video. When you think of swamps, I'm sure alligators and crocodiles come to mind. Yes, these do live in freshwater swamps, along with frogs and other amphibians, as well as fish and birds. Birds love the swamps because the trees and bushes provide great nesting opportunities as well as shelter. But the wide array of vegetation also provides food for these animals. Because freshwater swamps have such a rich biodiversity, nicknames like Fertile Crescent is given to the freshwater swamp between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. And the Everglades in Florida is a swampland named the River of Grass. The Everglades are home to a diversity of wildlife including panthers that live there. The second type of swamp is the saltwater swamp. These form on coastlines. Because the land of saltwater swamps is covered by seawater during high tides, plants like mangrove trees, which are able to tolerate and thrive in saltwater, form thickets of roots and branches in the sand and mud of these swamps. Mangrove tree roots are the home of many shellfish like crabs and conchs. The fallen leaves from the trees as well as the decay of the roots provide food and shelter for the animals that live there and increase the accumulation of soil in the swamp system. Like freshwater swamps, saltwater swamps have an array of diverse wildlife. Some ocean species spawn and lay their eggs in the saltwater swamp. Other species spawn in the open ocean and the young find their way to the swamps and live there till they mature. For this reason, saltwater swamps are often called the nurseries of the ocean. But why should we care about swamps? As mentioned before, you think of crocodiles, alligators, and lots of bugs, including mosquitoes and dragonflies, when you picture swamps. None of these things are very pleasant to think about standing around it. So why are swamps so important, other than they are home to such a rich diversity of plants and animals? Not only are they an important habitat for many types of birds and mammals, amphibians and fish species, but believe it or not, they help clean our waters and prevent erosion and even flooding. The soil in swamps is very rich and grows lots of different types of vegetation. This is great food for many species, but the soil in swamps also acts like a big sponge. It absorbs excess water during severe storms and flood events and distributes it before it can cause our waterways to flood. This also helps prevent erosion of the coastline. The soil in swamps is also porous, meaning it has lots of open spaces in it, which means lots of surface area. Sediment and pollutants that come from the surface of the land ends up getting deposited in the swamp soil particles before they can make it their way into our waterways. Without swamps, excess nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus that mainly come from excess fertilizers, water treatment plants, etc., can be dumped into our waters and can cause algal buildup that kills our marine life. 
If you've been to Florida or the Gulf Coast recently, you'll have seen the effects of this overabundance of nutrients in the water. Scientists call this red tide, and it kills fish and other living organisms that live in the sea. So you can say the swamps act like a natural water treatment system. So, with all of these benefits from swamps, why have so many of them in the past, and even today, been destroyed? Throughout history, swamps have been looked upon as sinister and forbidding places because of the annoying insects and scary creatures. So, because swamps didn't have a great reputation, many swamps were drained and filled in order to build houses, factories, and farms. This was before we knew about the important things that swamps do for us. There is still destruction in swamps today for these building purposes, but the government is regulating this now. A specific federal goal is no net loss of wetlands. It's in the Clean Water Act Section 404 Regulatory Program. By first avoiding, then minimizing, and finally compensating for any impacts to aquatic species caused by the discharge of dredge or fill material into waters of the United States. So, we have to first prove the impact cannot be avoided, then that the impact to the swamp has been minimized, and then people who want to build over swamps are required to compensate either the restoration of an existing swamp or replacing the swamp somewhere else of the same size and type. We're still losing acreage of swampland yearly, but hopefully our knowledge of the benefits of swamps bring to our world will encourage us to sustain this valuable resource. We want the benefits of swamps to continue for the next generation and forward. So, to summarize what we've learned about swamps, swamps are filled with water some or most of the year and have some kind of woody plants growing in them. We also learned about two types of swamps, freshwater and saltwater. We talked about the benefits of swamps, not only to the life that calls the swamp their home, but the benefits of swamps to us. We want to preserve our swampland because it helps prevent flooding and erosion, cleans our waters, and is also where we get two-thirds of our fish and shellfish that make, that make it to our tables, at home and in restaurants. Now that you know how great swamps are, maybe you won't be looking at them as bad places with bad things growing in them, but as beautiful contributions to the earth. Each swamp is unique, just like you.